Oh, all right. We all good? We're on? Clap it. He clapped it. I cut, cut your grass there. Sorry, you do it. He clapped That's it. That's fine. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> no, he no, I'm it. kidding. He it's all the same now. I lost my edge ever since Father Sam came on and <laughs> schooled Father me. Father Sam put us all on show, didn't he? Yeah. Such a good episode, that one. That was, oh, we'll put the was link. really nice. Put the link to that episode right now because we started a minute ago. Did we? We always catch you off with the start. Well, if we've started, Jaden. Thank you. Jaden. <laughs> Jaden wanted a shout out. <laughs> Jaden's, you gave it to him. Jaden's my best mate from school. Okay. And I've spoken about him a few times on the show, but he goes, you've never given me a shout out. Like you, you haven't said my name yet. And I, and I think it was the first or second episode I said, I mentioned a podcast that I watched mm. um, and I said a mate of mine sent it to me and it was him. So he was like, wow, thanks for the shout out. Like Anthony, is Jaden going to keep listening to the podcast now that he's finally got what he wanted? Or I sure hope so. Because I can cut it out if you want and, and string him along. Sorry, Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Only time will tell. Oh, well, Jaden, if you've heard this, then you it's it's obviously in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look, good on you, Jaden. I'll tell you who Jaden is not. He's not our show sponsor. <laughs> no, he's not. You, you're absolutely correct. Uh, as much as we love you, Jaden, you are not our show sponsor because our show sponsor is our lovely friends <laughs> at MJ Podiatry. And uh, just to remind everyone, MJ Podiatry is a mobile home visit network servicing all throughout Sydney. They're an all-around podiatry service, handing out general treatments, um, anything sport related. Uh, they offer NDIS and home care packaging. For any pains, injuries, custom-made orthotics, general advice on footwear, or general advice in general. <laughs> See what I did there? Anyway, <laughs> so just remember the team at MJ Podiatry, they do have your back, but they've also got your feet. So contact MJ Podiatry at 0412-389-278 or you can email them at info at mjpodiatry.com.au. Love it. Promo code. Oh, promo, promo code ATG10. Don't you forget it. Give a call through, send an email, book in with MJ Podiatry and give them that ATG10 promo code. Who doesn't want 10% off? People want 10% off. All the time. If you can get 10% off, you can take 10% off. Why not? Use the code. Yep. 10 Tune toes, in. 10%. <laughs> 10 toes. It's a percent per toe. Yeah. If you have nine toes, we apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Get your feet, like you always say, ready for Holy Thursday, but just in general, get them fixed, you know, mm. and mm. with a 10% discount, what can I lost us? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Not only will people need their feet right for Holy Week, people will also need their feet well treated for the Camino of St. Joseph. So smooth all the That time. Camino of St. Joseph is coming up. We've been promoting it for a few weeks now. For men of all ages, fathers, sons, grandfathers, uncles. Holy spirits. Nephews. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone, you know, um, solely, solely spirits. <laughs> <laughs> the Camino of St. Joseph coming up for men of all ages. Get those souls ready in time. In time for that big walk. And we'll have that up on the screen for your information. Um, but before the Camino, we do enter into the holiest of all weeks. Now, Holy Week, I'll have a lot more to say on that later on in the show. But I really encourage everyone... Here's my challenge to you. If you're watching or listening to this podcast right now, as of its release, I challenge you for this to be the last bit of media you interact with until the resurrection of our Lord. How's that for a challenge? That's a solid challenge. Yeah, so we're giving you time. You're watching this on a Wednesday because you're all enthusiastic viewers and listeners <laughs> of the show. So you watch it on our release. TVs, phones, devices, everything off. Enter into what's about to happen over these next few days and then we'll see on the other side of it all. But Holy Week coming up, we're encouraged to make this week different now. It's been a long Lent. You know, we're getting tired. We're all of those things that we've given up or taken on. 
We're getting more and more tempted by them. But this is the week. This is the week. The rubber really hits the road this week. Our Lord journeys to Calvary. He is betrayed by those that love him and he loves. It's a big week. So we'll get more into that a little bit later on. Beautiful. Before we... Uh, before we do get into that, we'll um, we'll kick off with the footy. I think it's been so. a big week of footy. I think so. Um, lots of interesting things happening in the games this week. Uh, disappointed to say that you got a tip right that we were ripping you for in <laughs> the last episode. I told you I had a feeling. Mm. Told you I had a feeling. But let's let's go in order. Must be divine divine <laughs> intervention or something. <laughs> Um, beautiful. All right. So let's start with the round three review, recap, whatever re you want to use. So Panthers, Broncos, Panthers took the game out 34-12 and uh, the BIPs, a reminder that we do collate the BIPs tips. The BIPs got that one correct. Yes. They tipped the Panthers. Cleary. Yeah. Masterclass. Come on. At home. They're looking dangerous. They're looking dangerous. That was a fantastic game. He took control there. He did. He carved up. So, um, Broncos had a few plays missing, which uh, I didn't know Adam Reynolds was going to be out. That was an interesting one. And um, Payne Haas was a late exclusion. And then um, Reese Walsh gets in- injured in the match, which I want to speak about a little bit. Reese Walsh uh, cops a head knock from a head clash. Okay, like, you know, it's unfortunate, whatever. He got injured, had to jump off the field, can't, couldn't come back on. Um, he's out now for, I don't know, I think four to six weeks or something along those lines. Mm. And Taylor May is put on report mm. for a head clash. And the ref said to him, oh, but you should have bent down, like you should have ducked. Because he was coming from the blind side. This was part of the commentary and the argument that was uh between gallon and thurston and and, yeah um, fitler yeah and fitler can i say something on this Mm. i'm starting to get a little bit tired of the superstars of our game being wrapped in cotton wool (laughs) in bubble wrap big core yeah because look (laughs) if that same hit happens to someone that might not be reese walsh walsh are they having those arguments? Are they mm. talking about it the way they do? Same thing. Like, I think it's safe to say now, and we've we've done this as well the last few weeks, Latrell Mitchell. Like, okay, you're a good, brilliant individual player. But you've got to start lifting your teammates. But everyone praises him every single week. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, these guys are given some special treatment sometimes. Yeah. And... <laughs> I agree. I think the, the the contact between May and Walsh, I think that was just mutual good hard contact. But people are saying it was May's responsibility coming in on the blind to make sure that that contact wasn't high. What but if, it was a head clash. Yeah. So what if Taylor May got knocked out from it? Mm. That is he put on report? Yeah, yeah. Just because he stayed on the field and Reese Walsh got injured, this is the thing. Whenever people get injured, especially the, the star players, mm. They they always look for someone to blame. Mm. It's like like this sports. It's a contact sport. People are going to get injured sometimes, and it's just it's just hard luck, you know. There's there's not always someone to blame for these injuries. No malice involved. No. He anyway. he tried to firstly he tried to hold back, like when he saw that he uh, popped. I think he like popped the ball past him or something. Mm. Uh, tap the ball that is anyway but either way whether he tries to stop or didn't the contact wasn't illegal it was a head clash mm. anyway we can't really rely on the nrl to use common sense because um, as we've seen a number of times in previous weeks like the Jer- jerome hughes situation we we're talking about last week what was the outcome there he got suspended did he yeah one game suspension and they had to accept it because the nrl is dumb enough to reject his early plea or like to still find him guilty after his sorry not early plea he's not if he pled not not guilty there was a risk he'd get suspended for two matches mm. and storm knew that nrl are dumb enough 
to still find him guilty. So they just accepted the early guilty plea and took the one one match ban. I think this is endemic of a bit of an overreach when it comes to rules. Mm. Um, letter of the law. We've spoken about this in previous weeks. We're too... It's the the game is becoming way too governed in these areas now. 100%. It's like just leave natural instincts. People love the game. People understand the situation. It can't always be black and white. But this is the way they're going, and they'll 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 put their hand up and say all four players' safety. We're trying to stamp things out of the game. We need to protect our referees. You we didn't argue that last week. Yeah. We said it's wrong to touch a ref. But if the ref gets in the way of the play, it was a shove. It's not like he coat hanged him or yeah. punched him in the head or anything. <laughs> he just shoved him out of the way because the ref was in the way. Yeah. And it wasn't something that was malicious. That's right. So we've discussed this already. It's one of those things. Mm. I, I just wanted to comment on what you were saying before about the cotton wool. One thing I didn't think about last week was Brandon Smith swore twice on a podcast and got and a fine from the NRL. For putting the game into disrepute. Did he really? Yes. Mm, and so Latrell yeah. Mitchell mm-hmm. wearing a NRL jersey with NRL branding on it on 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 live radio with cameras pointed at him. Says several swear words. Then on top of that says, I know I'm swearing and I don't care. Nothing. Nothing. I'm pretty sure they spoke about it on NRL three sixty and they were saying everyone knows it's a joke. Because apparently Andrew Abdul I was going to have a meeting with him. Yeah. Was it Abdo or Valandi? One of them. Yeah. Abdo, Abdo was going to have a meeting with Luttrell. Like, for, for what? Just sit down. Bro. What's no the meeting can, about? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's he, what's he going to say? Uh, can you not swear, please? Like, all right, bro. Yeah. Great meeting. Everyone knows it's a joke. Go sit down. Don't do anything or, or do something. Mm. Pick one and just stick to it. Yeah. You make anyway. The wizard makes a very good point there. Mm. Then there seems to be a double standard. Mm. Not just in the footy in life. Seems to be. Mm. Well, if it was, if it was another player on the radio swearing, I reckon he would have copped it. They another would've player would have copped 100%. it. Hundred percent. Yep. Anyway, <sighs> we know that sometimes common sense doesn't prevail, and it's not so instance, common anymore. Mm, this is the problem. Mm. So well, we're just going to call it sense from now. Are, sorry, a lot of those decisions mm. are based on fear. They don't know how to handle it. They don't even got the guts to handle it. <sighs> so ridiculous. Anyway. But boy, were the Panthers good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, Panthers killed it. So, um, you could say that the Broncos are missing players. That's a fair argument to make. Um, but Panthers are looking better. They were sharp. But yeah. They were sharp. They were. Yeah. And when so, Cleary's in that mood, that killer mindset, doesn't matter who he's against. Yeah, so true. He proved it in the grand final. Yeah. Yeah. He proved it. So true. There were no excuses then. There won't be any now. No. Nah. No. So, he's too good. Mm. He's too good, and the the speed at which they spread the ball, incredible. Mm. So good. So Panthers took that game out. Well done to them. Now we have the uh, Warriors Raiders, and the Warriors won eighteen ten. So Warriors won their first game of the year, and the Bips tipped the Warriors as well. So two out of two, mm-hmm. and um, so the first two weeks the Warriors lost, and we were saying they still look good. Then in their win against the Raiders last week, I was thinking it's, I, I still think they're going to kill it, but there's a bit of cause for concern mm. for the Warriors because they're really, they're, they only scored three tries, right? 18, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And, um, and they had plenty more opportunities. So they're really struggling in the finishing. Uh, sorry, they're really struggling to finish their, their attacking plays. Mm. They did come up against what we've already discussed in being a very good Canberra outfit. Yeah. Canberra are gelling this season. Man. They're they're looking good. Crazy. So that that was a good game. 18 10, good, good low score line. Yeah. Entertaining. Yeah. Raiders uh, Raiders really could have easily won that game. Like Mm. I think they they kept themselves in it really well. So Raiders are really impressive. We'll um just have to wait and see. They are there are teams who in in this third round weren't showing the same quality they did in the first two. I think Raiders were still really showing it. Mm. So they're they're looking pretty impressive and consistent. Now we come to a team who 
uh, is still trying to win their first game of 2024. And that's the Rabbitohs who lost to <laughs> to the Roosters 48-6. So that was a demolition. I was so surprised by that scoreline. Yeah. I thought the Rabbitohs, I tipped the Rabbitohs. I thought they were yeah. going to come good. I thought um, their new recruit was going to play and oh, Wyden. Wyden was going to make a difference and clearly not. Yeah. What kind of game was that? It's, that was um, such a shocking scoreline. Yeah. Well, uh, firstly, the Bips tipped the Roosters, so well done, three from three. Um, there, there was some serious panic from the Rabbitohs. So Jason Dimitri dropped Lachlan Ilias. We spoke about that last week, um, which was such a silly move, and brought um, Hawkins on. So... Not that I, not, I don't have anything against Hawkins, but it's ridiculous that Lachlan Elias copped, uh, copped everything really, because of the Rabbitohs' losses, as if it was his fault. Mm. The same thing that was that we say about the Bulldogs, we can say about the Rabbitohs now as well, is that, um, and, and we could and we said about the Tigers as well last week, is you need a proper halfback in there, okay, which they have in Lachlan Elias. But what they've done is they've given the the whole the full responsibility and control of the team to Cody Walker. It's clear in the way they play. He runs the team. And it was the same with Burden and Flanagan when we were talking about the Bulldogs. So you can't really expect much from your halfback if he's just the 13th player on the field and you haven't given him responsibility because your halfback runs the team. That's, that's the role of a halfback. So he also um, started Cook on the bench, Damien Cook on the bench. I don't know why... I don't know if he said there was a reason for it. Maybe he was sick or something. But um, that, if there was no reason for that, that's serious panic. When you've trained all preseason with this spine and then you just, in round three, just drop completely. Uh, that's serious panic. Roosters were class. They're so good. You know how I always say I hate the Roosters? I think I have a, a little bit of a soft spot for them. I don't know why, but they're just, they're really entertaining to watch. It's really enjoyable to watch the Roosters. There's not much to say. Just watch them. They were so clean. So, belting. And I don't think um, Kiri played, did he? Oh, no. He didn't. There was no and Kiri. So, and so Walker really stepped up. Walker stepped up, but also Kiri's replacement, Sandon Smith. Mm was actually a quality mm. quality replacement. So he did really well, yeah. They've got some depth. And just played with confidence. Yeah. And they look like a system that a player, if he knows his role, can easily just step into and they do well. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, carved up. Um, now we come to the Bulldogs versus the Titans. Firstly, the result. What was the score? Oh, yes. Sorry. <clears throat> the score was 32 nil. Can we, in favour of? In favour of the Bulldogs! Yeah! <laughs> mate, mate. Just one, just one. That's the one. Pull it out. Give Pull us a sec, out. ladies We're and gentlemen. We're going to do it. Give us a sec. We're going to do it. Doesn't happen always. I don't know if this is in, whoops. I don't know if this is in the camera view. Here we go. <laughs> Get it. Yeah. <laughs> have a wave. Have I want a wave, wave. father. I really have a wave. wave. I want to get it going. Remember you used to do this at the footy? And then to the person in front of you, you'd go like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Bulldogs. All right. How beautiful. Look, look. We held a team to nil. That's what I'm more happy with. <laughs> we held a team insane. to nil. I know. Wow. I know. This is nuts. Okay. So we had to do this. Because it's probably the only time this year we're going to be doing it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for the Bulldogs. Um, the Bips, by the way, tipped the Bulldogs. Yes. So well done. Yes, yes. Um, that's what's that? Four from four or something? However, wherever up to you, 100% at the moment. <laughs> so. Um, what a game. Firstly, yeah, Titans, Titans are, they look really off, like just very poor. That bomb try at the beginning didn't help them, their cause. I think that set the tone for them. I can't believe he passed it. Yeah, so true. So true. I don't know why he passed that. Um, and at their spiritual home at Belmore. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Mm. Well done. Well done to the Bulldogs. Um, 
that that bomb try really like sorry to bring this back up but that bomb try just <laughs> keep talking <laughs> that really highlighted Blake Taft's concerns I mean the concerns we have for Blake Taft at fullback mm. like AJ Brimson beat him to the ball that's pretty bad so <laughs> so um not that Brimson's a bad player or anything but like they're both short and he got absolutely hammered by him mm. so um that's pretty concerning. Other than that, other than Blake Taft's like real defensive concerns that mm. I think need to be addressed ASAP. Um, it was a quality game. Yeah. I heard people say like Bulldogs, oh, Bulldogs didn't play well, Titans just played bad. Not true. Hutchinson had a great game. Didn't he just? He had a great game. Didn't he just? Yep. Did you see two of his try savers? Yeah. He had a great game. Good great game. Player. Kick out played out of his skin. Yeah. A for effort nearly every week. But that's, yeah. Kick out has been that. And pressure on the, defensively, pressure on the ball kicker, caused oh. a few mistakes. Poor Tanner Boyd, he was bullied. How good is that new rule now? That the players can't protect the kicker anymore. Oh, yeah. It's so like good. That. Because look at what Kick out did. He put so much pressure on yeah. the ball kicker every time. Amazing. They weren't learning as well. Mm. Like, like drop back, go get deep. If you're, if mm. the forwards are putting that much pressure on you, get deep so you can actually have yeah. time to put the kick in. Great charge really down weird. that led to a try. Yeah. So, kick out. Yeah, played really well. Mm. Um, Hutchison killed it. Yes. Burden moved. Did you notice? Burden moved. He moved, and we they scored. must have been listening to you, because <laughs> in the commentary I heard, how good are they when they're not always going left. Oh, there you go. See? Bro, honestly, just killed it. And when we start to threaten on the just right side. Bit more. Thank oh, you. sorry. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. When we start to threaten um, on the right side, that's when we can start taking it left because now mm. they're not expecting us to go left all the time. Now there's a threat on both sides. And every time the ball went right, who smashed it for the dogs? Mate. Keep that one up. Oh, yeah. Well done. Well Who done. smashed it for the dogs? Mate, you can't go past Jacob Carraz's yeah. performance. Yeah. <laughs> Lebanon <laughs> International, Jacob Carraz. What Mate. a try. <laughs> that try, that power. That is that is a stubborn leb right there, man. <laughs> That's what Mate, I'm he saw about. that try line and he just went. He went he for it. He just went. Make Mate. sure we tag Jacob in this segment of the show, please. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. You gotta love it. This is just It was multicultural. We're really round. having fun with so Oh yeah, this that's is justified. Right. Oh yeah, true, true. <laughs> we're just having fun, mate. The Bulldogs won. It was really it was really We great. may not get too many more opportunities to to be like this throughout the season. <laughs> so <laughs> <It's> so true. <laughs> we'll bring the flag out every Bulldogs win. Yeah, done. Let's do that. Mm. All right. Easy. So um anyway. Oh <laughs> almost broke the TV. Anyway. Um, it was a really, uh, really impressive performance anyway from the Bulldogs. Um, the forwards really, uh, really aimed up for the first time. And I think that's what the Bulldogs needed. I think the Bulldogs just needed that game against sort of a, not a weaker side, but a like definitely one of the bottom sides um, just for a confidence boost. Because they came up against two tough opponents like Eels and Sharks, tough opponents in the first two rounds. Hopefully, this is enough of a confidence boost to get him going. So, we'll see. Um, one thing, sorry, I will mention as well, just lastly on the Bulldogs, is I couldn't help but read all the comments when I saw the team list come out. So, I know we spoke about like changes we would make if we were coaching things. But when I saw the team list and it was the exact same, I was like, this is respectable. Like, as, as much as I have concerns over Blake Taff and... To be honest, like if Taft gets dropped, I won't complain. It was really respectable to see Serato name the same team and people were going nuts in the comment. Nuts. They're like, what is this team? This is a joke. Get ready to lose, blah, 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 all this stuff. If you really want your, like we always say, keep the same, like keep the same players around Burden or something, for example, you know, so that we can learn to have chemistry and whatever and learn it, like each other's games. This is how you do it. By naming the same team every week. Yeah. So. And it was justified, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. By the improvement from round one 
they held their own against the Sharks, if not for those last few tries in the last 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah. From round one to two and to three, you just – there was a feeling. I said it last week. There's a feeling that they're going to come good, that they're, they're working. There's a bit of consistency there. So, I mean, justified in his selection, regardless of what team you're playing, I think changes can be made later in the season if yeah. they need to be. But these first few rounds, they're feeling it out, seeing how they go. Yeah. So if Taft's there for another four or five rounds and he does well, keep him in. If he's not, think about a reshuffle. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't believe in, oh, you have a bad game, one or two games, you've got to make a change. Yeah, yeah. Like what does that do for a player's confidence? Yeah, so true. You've got to let it play out. Um, and like with the Rabbitohs, when you've trained all preseason with, with this team, these players in these positions, you don't want to rush out of that. Yeah, It's a shame um, Connor Tracy will have to probably step aside for Fox in the next week or so. But he was mm. so good over the weekend. He was really strong. Connor Tracy was really good. Even even last week against the Sharks, like he, he didn't get the ball much in attacking positions. Um, maybe a couple of times he did, but uh, his hit-ups are definitely stronger than Addo Carr's. Mm. Potential, and uh, maybe we'll speak about it in the preview a tiny bit, but potential for Connor Tracy to move to fullback and Taft get dropped. Who knows? We'll I don't think Serato will do it, but... He's a little potential. guy and he made a lot of meters for... You know, he was always dangerous. It was like he had spiders on him. Yeah. yeah it, was good. it was impressive. He looked he looked tenacious. Like, they, yeah. they, they, they all... they. Yeah, they looked ready. The they were ready to ready. play. Yeah. They were. Good win. Kept the kept the Titans to zero. To zero. Yeah, that, that's the most impressive thing. Yep. That really is. First time in over 20-odd years, I think they were saying after the game, that a team's uh, Bulldog has... Uh, Bulldog's uh, team. Belmore, yeah, think, Belmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's well, right. Well, I mean, they rarely play at Belmore these days. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but still something good, to be proud of. Yeah, still a good feat. All right. Now... Let's move to the Dragons versus Cowboys. So, this was an interesting one. Uh, definitely the most interesting game of the round. So, the Bips tipped the Cowboys and they got it right. So, 46-24 to the Cowboys. Um, now, Cowboys, are, they're impressive. Like, we've seen it over the past three weeks. They're the only team to have won all three games so far. Um, they do look really impressive. But, so do the Dragons. I know there's cause for concern uh, and Flanagan's addressed it. Even Ben Hunt addressed them. I have no doubt that the, that Dragons are going to like properly go through those concerns and then put the resolutions into action in the in future games. Um, they, they were carving the Cowboys up in that first half. So they get a call. They, they get... Um, a call of a forward pass, which disallows one of their tries, which I thought was pretty close. There are more obvious forward passes that were missed this weekend alone, um, but might have been the right call. Got a rule on the forward pass. Yeah. Hashtag rule on the forward pass. <laughs> yes, that's right. Got the technology, um, man. Got to use it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree now because the game's slow anyway. May as well just add that. You can, I mean, it doesn't take... They can rule on knock-ons. They, they, they'll go to the bunker for a, a bomb situation where yeah. a ball has it travelled backwards or forwards. If you can rule on that, use the technology that is available to you and be able to rule. Just all you have to do is, so is very simply <laughs> put a line up against the meterage lines, yeah. pause it at the moment the ball leaves the player's hands, and if it comes out backwards, it's fair game. If it comes out <laughs> forwards, you can see it quite easily. Yeah. And then just make the call. Yeah, so true. Anyway, I digress. Sorry. Keep, let's stay on no, point. No, you're all right. Well, um, it happened a couple of times where they had a disallowed try or, or they got close, the Dragons, and then they just let Cowboys march upfield and score, which they did for the first try. So 6-0 Cowboys. Then Dragons just came out three tries in a row. Um, and then the, this was the turning point, in my opinion, of the game. Now, I'm not saying it's his fault because the Dragons, the team should be able to defend this. Like, they, they should be able to defend um, as a team, you know, better than they did. But 
last tackle near the line, Ben Hunt puts a grubber in for Raymond Fatal and Mariner. And, and it's like, just catch the ball and put it down. It's the, it's the simplest thing, easiest thing. A couple of players around him are not too close. Not that much pressure. And he just drops the ball cold. And then Cowboys, I think they got a penalty mm. after that. So they got the ball, got a penalty, and then scored maybe a couple of sets later after a dropout or something. Like, you know, like they, um, it was that was a real turning point. It was there for them to win the Dragons. It was. But then they started, they, they gave up that lead. Yeah. So that, that's con- that, that defense is concerning. The attack is there for the Dragons. So they're really impressive. I like, I like what I'm seeing from the Dragons personally. And Cowboys are just carving up. I really like the Cowboys. All right. Tigers versus Sharks. Let's just pause for a moment. <laughs> and some people go, you know, Father Ben, you're a Catholic priest. What do you know about footy? I get it. I get it. I get it. Look, at the end who, of the- Who said that? Look, <laughs> at the end of the day, I said Leichhardt. I said Benji would have learned from that first game. I reckon the players would have lifted. I had a feeling about the game. And you can call it divine intervention if you want to call it that. But I'm just going to call it a footy mind. <laughs> I had a feel for it. I thought about it. And I was, I was quite sure that one of two things were going to happen. The Tigers came switched on. Or Cronulla came switched off. And both happened. Wow. Both happened. That's a big call. Well done. So, look, if we need to go back for a tip of the season, I'm nominating myself and saying this was the tip of the season. It's definitely up there. So uh, so far, it's the tip of the season. It's tip of the season so far. Proceed. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Well, no, honestly, oh, look, well I, I copped, I copped a bit of flack on and off the show yeah. for making this tip. Yeah. And to all of those who doubted, I forgive you. <laughs> you know what? Fair. You, you have every right to be saying what you just said because <laughs> it was a solid tip, man. Tigers took the game out. Not quite 32-0, but 32-6. Impressive. Impressive. 32 unanswered points. Shark scored first, didn't score again. So, uh, Bips, this I'm sorry, this was your first incorrect tip of the round. Um, tip the Sharks. Next time, listen to Father Ben, even though the tips were before the episode came out. <laughs> Just no, <know>, okay? <laughs> um, now, yeah, Sharks, I guess I guess you could say Sharks were switched off, but, but I think the Tigers just played better. Tigers were hungry. Yeah. All these young guys, something to prove. Yeah. Benji's been in the news. You're not working long enough. Yeah, yeah. You're not putting right. it in like you should. You're a lazy coach. He showed them. Yeah. I know exactly. it's one, but that's all right. But it's a it's a good win. It's actually a great win. You look like you want to say something. I just wanted to say <laughs> if you've seen the post game footage of them trying to sing their, their new club song. <laughs> It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I they're see. all holding sheets of paper yeah. and they're like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Did you see the Bulldogs one? I was going to say the Bulldogs oh. one wasn't that much better. Oh, yeah, Fox goodness. forgot the words. Yeah. He was leading it and everyone was copying him and he forgot the words. <laughs> so he just went. Ah, ah, ah. It was, but it so, was funny. It was <laughs> funny. Fletch and Hindy. Um uh, zoomed in on the dressing room video. Yeah. Um, I think it was Adam Dewey and Alex Twal standing together. <laughs> and they're like, Twal was struggling so hard, <laughs> even with the paper in front of him. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> can he read? <laughs> like, What's going on? <laughs> That's gold, man. It was so awkward. Oh, because fire. you know they want to get into it and they want to really belt out the song. But no one knows the words. So we've got a piece of paper. <laughs> it, just, oh, it just took the it took the 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 zing out of what they were doing. Yeah. It was pretty That's funny. <laughs> anyway, that was after that the been game. Such an anticlimax. <laughs> Boy, did they play a good game. They really did. Appy. Yeah. Out of his skin. Yeah. Out of his skin. What a game. Best player on the field by far. Yeah. 
Uh, I think that was pretty clear. Like, Coruscant, best player on the field. I think it's pretty clear how important Aiden Caesar is <laughs> at halfback. His kicking game and just the way he controlled the team was um, was on point. And I'm not just talking the two kicks that resulted in tries. I'm talking his kicking game throughout the whole match. Um, so that's that's how important having a halfback is. So um, that was that was really impressive. I, I think they honestly. Um, there, there was so much improvement in the Tigers. Firstly, when I saw the team list, I thought this is a this is a better team. Um, Justin Oldham, firstly in, which was good um, after injury, and he he got a try. Well done to Oldham. Um, then also it was moving Alex Seifarth to to the bench from lock and putting Fanua Pole Pole or something. I don't know how to, how they say it. Um, he was a good inclusion in lock, uh, and then Caesar halfback. So it was quality um well done to the tigers congratulations there we go tigers and bulldogs grand final 2024 <laughs> <laughs> um, now we come so these are two very very interesting games two upsets in a row ills versus manly ills take the game out 28 24 bips tipped manly unfortunately so that's another one wrong um still doing better than me i'm pretty sure though so well done <laughs> um look Manly were kind of disappointing to let go of the lead they had. So I'm not going to blame the whole loss on the obvious thing that we're going to talk about from this game. Uh, Ills, look, I'm not going to say, I'm also not going to say that the Ills didn't deserve the win because they did well to be in they the game in and to come back and yeah. they actually played well. So well done to the Ills. Um, Manly are impressive as always, but they just they they just couldn't get the job done. That obstruction core is like the the so we've seen so far through the kick out no try last week, through the Jerome Hughes incident with so they, they they were both with refs. Then now we see through this obstruction that what the NRO is saying is act. So like be soft, act as if you've been obstructed, because that's when you get the core for you. So, the two incidents out of the three I just mentioned, the kick out no try, Trindle with all his theatrics, like not not as theatrical actually, but um, still complaining, you know, the ref's in his way, blah, blah, blah. And then this one where the guy walks and, uh, and gives Jake Trebojevic a, a cuddle, gives up on the play completely was not interested in, in following the play because he thought it was going left. And then when Trebojevic cuts back on the inside, he realizes like, I should have followed the play. So he acts as if Jake, Jake Trebojevic is in his way. So NRL is saying really act because the one time the player didn't act, which was Jerome Hughes, when he just nudged the ref out of the way so he could make the tackle, they punished him for it. So it was a joke of a call. Then you could say, well, it's justified because the pass from Tom Trebojevic was forward. The obstruction's not justified. Mm. <laughs> that was not an obstruction at all. Extremely, extremely um, annoying and disappointing. Other than that, good game to watch. Yeah, Pretty impressive. Both, both teams were in it. They were yeah. both in it. It was Josh Alloyer's 50th club game for yeah, Manly. Got Put on his backside. And then Simbin. Yeah. And but we Simbin. love Josh. We, we love Josh. Josh. So <laughs> congratulations. Look, you're not going to be put on your backside if you're not running hard. Yeah, true. So, and, and he's he always was, running hard. Yeah, he was. He's doing very well. Yeah. Doing very which well. Which is great. Which is great. And the passion he plays with. We and love. there was a, su a successful challenge. Oh, yeah. Right at the start right of the game. Right at the start. <laughs> and his captain listened to him. Yeah. And he knew there was a strip there. Mm, and we always... They like the, the thing in the NRO is front rowers don't, don't believe challenge. the front rowers. Don't believe not them. our Josh, mate. Yeah. Our Josh, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, congratulations to Josh. That's a massive feat. So well done. Massive achievement. 50 club games for Manly. And um, then we get to the Knights versus the Storm. Mm. And Knights took the game out 14-12. Uh, the Bips tipped the Storm. So the last three for the round, unfortunately, 
were wrong for the bips, but there were three upsets. So you you did you did well. Well yep. done. Yep, the bips, jips. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so last week I said knights are one of the storms bogey teams, right? Yeah. Okay. When I said that, I didn't anticipate that Jerome Hughes was going to be out because I don't think that Storm lost on Sunday because Knights are one of their bogey teams. So I think it was just because they don't have both their halves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Munster, and, Munster, we don't know how long he's out for. Um, he is obviously out for that game. And even though Pezza and Wishart played okay, like they, they did their job, it just wasn't the same. Mm. wasn't as clean. Errors were, wow, like, yeah for storm error plagued like so it just wasn't there's not really much to say just you know storm is just going to come back Mm. and come back harder yeah so um yeah good win for the knights good win for the knights pong is pong is uh set up that dummy's right from dummy half and then throws like a diving superman pass yeah Yeah. (laughs) that was that was incredible that was a highlight so that was nice um but a good good win for the knights Right. And impressive. Well done to them. And that's that's round three. That's round three. So good on you, Knights. Now, we get to a quick, similar to last week, round four preview. So let's go quick fire tips. Um, Roosters, Panthers starts off Thursday night, 8 o'clock. That's Holy Thursday. Um, Roosters in second at the moment and Panthers at fourth. Mm. At Allianz Stadium. At Allianz. Yep. Well, firstly, viewership's going to be down because everyone's going to be at the Lord's Supper Mass. Amen. Um, so and you, then, you might not have the support that's needed. This is true. Um, and then they're going to be doing the visitation of the Seven Churches pilgrimage. Yes. Um, which the Sydney Archdiocese is heavily promoting. Oh, well. Um, so that'll be fantastic. A lot of churches, more than ever, I think, in our history of the Sydney Archdiocese and the Holy Thursday practice are all going to be open till midnight, a lot of churches. Wow. Thanks and that, God. that particular um, resource that the Archdiocese of Sydney has released tells you which churches are open till midnight. So you can oh, actually nice. plan your own seven churches pilgrimage. Nice. And they give nice. you the prayers and everything. So it's pretty much going to be an empty stadium. Yeah, um, that's right. Viewership on Channel 9 is going to be down yeah. about 70%. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but even with that lack of support... Penrith, I think, are going to win that game. Big call. I, too, go Penrith. Mm. I am going to go just for the sake of... Actually, no. I was going to say for the sake of being different. I had Panthers in my head and I was going to go Roosters for the sake of being different. We agreed. I'm just going Panthers. We're tipping with our heads this year. Yeah, true, true. Yep. Yeah, that's worked well for me so far. Yeah, um, Tigers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a head tip. Yeah. Not my head though. Uh. Yeah, 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 not mine either, man. So, um, yeah, okay. So we're going Panthers for that one. Yep. They're a very good game. Mm. Two premiership contenders. Mm-hmm. Now we have the unfortunate Good Friday clash. Rabbitohs versus Bulldogs. Who are we going with? I'm going to tip the Rabbitohs. I think they're a lot's been written about them and said about them this week. I think they're going to be angry. They're going to be eager. They know they can't keep playing the way they have been. Mm. Um, it's a head tip. I've got to go Rabbitohs. And it's their home game, I believe. It is their home game, but it's at a core. So. so it's like a Bulldogs home as well. Look, once again, it's Good Friday. I hope that all of our... Christian supporters of Bulldogs will refrain from going to that game, um, watching it because we're all supposed to be about the Lord's passion at 3 p.m. True. True. Um, like I said, my challenge to you all, stay away from it all. The three holiest days of the year, the Paschal Sacred Triduum, just stay away from it. Yeah. You will survive. Yeah, It's not necessary. Let's, let's give it to our Lord. But I think the Rabbitohs will be too strong. Beautiful. I think the dogs will come very focused, um, and I think I'm tipping the dogs. Yeah. Wow. I think they're going to come with intent because it would almost be all for nothing. Everything that they're standing by and their defense, um, if they don't at least win back-to-back. So I think they're going to be coming with a lot of intent. And Souths have a lot of baggage. 
right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, I um, I, I struggled with this one, but I also think Bulldogs will come pretty determined, but I also think the Rabbitohs will uh, prove, like they'll try and try and make a statement. So I'm just going to go Rabbitohs. I don't know. All right. Next. Keep in mind, <laughs> M- Murray is in a bit of doubt and Wyden's in a bit of doubt. I go Bulldogs. <laughs> if there's no Cam Murray, I'm going Bulldogs 100%. He didn't train today. Neither did Wyden. Today is in Monday when you know Atomo filming. Uh, knee. Okay, I'm going Bulldogs. Okay. <laughs> How easily swayed. Hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, cause Cam Murray is currently the only player yeah, trying. The heartbeat. Yeah. Is a heartbeat. So, all right. Hope I don't get that wrong, Anthem. I'm blaming you. Sorry. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> um, then we have another Good Friday clash. Uh, so that's Broncos Cowboys. So the old Queensland Derby. Queensland Derby. Broncos Cowboys at Suncorp. At Suncorp. Mm-hmm. Even though they're undefeated, I think the Broncos will come good. Wow. Big call. Yeah, I think Big Brother always has a mental edge over Little Brother. That's um, fair, actually. A lot of the time, but the Broncos, do they are they at full strength? The Broncos? I no, don't know. it's always missing. hard. Team lists are never out. Well, they're missing. Walsh is Walsh definitely out, and possibly Payne Haas. Oh, Payne Haas is definitely out. Oh, well, there you go. For like six weeks or something, at least. Oh, uh, sorry, at at most, I think it's six yeah, weeks. Yeah. So R- Walsh. But Adam Reynolds. Mm. Do we know if he's in or out? Don't know. I'll check. That's interesting. But you know, we we're saying about voting, uh, voting, tipping with our head. Mm. It's it's one versus fourteen. So, I'm tipping the Cowboys. Yeah, I'm gonna tip the Cowboys. I'm going Cowboys too. I'm yeah. really backing them this year. With that information, I'm gonna tip the Cowboys. But if Reynolds is there, it turns into a different game. Yeah, I'm gonna tip Cowboys. Me uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> Cowboys, it is. All right. So we have a consensus is it, there. Is a chance to return. Reynolds? Yeah. Reynolds is a chance to return. Tristan Sadler would be in at the fullback. Oh. Yeah. I'm still I'm still going Cowboys. Cowboys. One V fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. That's only after three rounds. We're talking one V fourteen. True. I'm gonna still pick the Cowboys. Okay. But it's easier to deal with the loss when you go, Yeah, well you went with logic and sometimes mm. those things happen. It's true. So true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get us cut. Yeah. yeah. Good great point, Ed. <laughs> All right, so Cowboys. Um, now we get to Dragons versus Manly. This is my interesting game of the round. Mm. Who's the home team? Dragons. Dragons. Wollongong. It's in Wollongong, yeah. I'm going to pick Manly. I like, yeah. even, in, even in defeat, I thought they played well. Yeah. They were in it. I like the way Manly are playing. No serious injuries. I think Manly are going to be good. Nice. I'm going to go Manly as well. Yeah. Can't tip the Dragons at the moment. Too hot and cold. Fair. Well, sorry, hot and cold and cold again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going Dragons this this game. Yeah. I'm, I'm backing them. Backing them. Yeah. Hard to go against Manly, but I'm backing Dragons. Mm-hmm. Anyway... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Titans versus Dolphins uh, is the second Easter Saturday game or Holy Saturday. Mm. Uh, Titans home game, playing in the Gold Coast. Who are you going with? I think the Dolphins will be good. I'm glad you said that because if you said Titans, I'd start second guessing. You're picking upsets really well. (laughs) No, no, I think the Dolphins will be good. (laughs) Good. Yeah, I think um, not that Wayne Bennett needs any help, but... I think the Bulldogs gave Dolphins a perfect blueprint on how to um, mm. control the halfback. Yeah. Yeah. Tanner, is it Tanner Boyd? Yeah, Tanner Boyd. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going Dolphins too. Yeah, just replace Kikau with Kafusi, and there you go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so true. So true. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Okay. That's quite an easy one. Uh, not easy, a simple one. You never mm. know what will happen. Mm. Now we have Warriors Knights. These are always interesting games. I'm pretty sure Knights can be Warriors bogey team as well sometimes. Home it's game. in Auckland though. Mm. 
I've got to go Warriors at home. Warriors. Yeah, if they address finishing those tries, they'll they'll come out pretty confident. I'm going Warriors too. Yeah. A little bit hesitant on that though. But anyway, Sharks Raiders now in Cronulla. Uh, Cronulla, yep. I can't see the Sharks playing the way they played again last week. Um, I think the Sharks will be good at home. Canberra have been playing very well. Yeah. They'll be hungry after that loss to New Zealand. Um, but at home, I think the Sharks will be too strong. Sharks, fair. Yeah, home side. Fitzgibbon will get them up for it. So Sharks. He's a good coach, Yeah, Fitzgibbon. Um, I guess I might go with my second upset of the round and say Raiders. I'm going Raiders. Okay. I've tipped against them, I think, every week. And they've proven me wrong. So, hopefully they get up. Mm -hmm. Now we have the traditional Easter Monday clash. Eels versus Tigers. Parramatta, Combank Stadium. I don't have that feeling about the Tigers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. I don't. I mean, they've, they they prove that they, they can play when they're on. Um, but I think Parramatta at home with the team that they have, are going to be too strong for the Tigers. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going heels. I'll, I'll get a lot of pleasure watching Tigers win, though, if that happens. Yeah. But I'll, I'm tipping heels. I'm tempted to say Tigers. <laughs> However, I will not be doing that. It's just the temptation. Mm. I'm going heels. So that finishes off our end. Storm have the bye. So... They'll get the two points on that one. Okay, they, yeah, I tipping, believe so. Tipping storm. I believe yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, that's our round four tips for the week. So Roosters, Panthers on Holy Thursday. Uh, I've gone Panthers. Yep. Is that who I tipped? Yep. Far out, I've got a bad memory. You've got to write these down. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Far out. Okay, so Roosters, Panthers, Holy Thursday. I've gone Panthers. All right, there we go. Now, the Good Friday doubleheader, um, which we won't be watching on the day. Rabbitohs, Bulldogs, I've gone uh, Rabbitohs. And Broncos, Cowboys, I've gone Cowboys. Thank you. <laughs> um, now we have uh, on Saturday, Dragons versus Manly. And I've gone Dragons to upset Manly. Dolph uh, Titans, Dolphins, sorry. And I've gone Dolphins to take that out. Warriors versus Knights in Auckland. Warriors, I think, will be too strong. And um, Sharks Raiders finishes off that Sunday, and I've gone a Raiders upset, and then traditional Easter Monday clash, Eels versus Tigers. I've gone Eels, and that's round four. That's round four, and we'll see how we all go. Let's do it. We'll see how we all go. Now, to be part of the tipping, to be part of the bips, bips tips, <laughs> you've got to like, subscribe, comment, and follow. You've got to be part of our Instagram community, even though I am not. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got to be in it to be able to vote on these things so please um, share it amongst your family and friends for those of you that have social media and get involved get involved because your contributions are helping the BIPs the BIPs and their tips so Amen. get amongst it it is now time for Father Ben's Big Hit of the Week Proudly brought to you by Totus Tours Clothing. So, as always, check out Totus Tours. Um, they're below. Uh, and uh, as we always say, evangelize not just through your words and actions, but through your clothing too. So, check them out. Totus Tours. Big got, hit of the week. What do you got for me? I was hesitant to pick this big hit mm. because... We all love the person that got hit. But you know what? A big hit's a big hit. We're not biased here. Yep. We just got to show you the big hit. All right. Show me this big hit. All right. Oh, here we go. Go on, Josh. Go get him, Josh. Big oh. hit. <laughs> oh, Cartwright on the other way. That's just putting everything into it. And Cartwright just lined him up. Boom. Oh, oh big hit. But you know what I love? Josh got up with a smile on his face. Yeah. <laughs> that is a fantastic run. You got to be passionate. 
Sometimes it works for you, other times it doesn't. Mm. Josh, we're glad you're well. We're glad you came out of that. You know who we need to pray for um, is Big Tino. Yes. Tino's ruptured the ACL out yeah, for a season. That's not good. You never like to see players injured, especially players that are so much of a, a heart and soul of the team. Yeah. So, yeah. Tino, if this makes the rounds and you're out there <laughs> in the internet, the webverse, the internet universe, <laughs> we're praying for you, mate. I hope you have a good recovery. Um, and for any player that's been seriously injured, I know we can be critical sometimes of a p- player's performance, but I mean, Reese Walsh, that big hit, that what that did for your to your eye, and we just we want to make sure you have a smooth recovery and a yeah, a good sure. one, and and keeping good spirits, mate. For sure. Okay, so that's the big hit. Done. We are going to change gears, and we are now going to talk about what it's really all about in the holiest week of the entire liturgical year. We are approaching now our Lord's final moments, uh, the sacred Paschal Triduum, where we've celebrated Palm Sunday. And part of my preaching on Palm Sunday, it's very interesting because, you know, in Palm Sunday you've got the prolonged passion narrative Yes, where you've got it read in parts. If you're at St. Mary's Cathedral, it's actually sung. So it actually went for half an hour. Wow. And it was done beautifully. The choir play some of the parts and our very own Father Roberto played the part oh, of Christ. He and he's a got a beautiful voice. voice. Yeah. So that was done beautifully. And it's so funny because our Lord on Palm Sunday, um, within that gospel narrative, is welcomed into Jerusalem. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Um, descendant of David and um, he's praised. And then moments later, that same crowd will be crying out, crucify him. And so how, how our, our temperaments, our human condition can just change. Um, and it was because the mob got rolled up. People followed the popular opinion. Yeah. And so we come to see that this week. So we've, we've begun his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem on a donkey and they're laying palms down and they're welcoming him as a king. And we're going to get to this very sacred three days that's coming up now, but not before a very beautiful liturgy that we have in the church called the Chrism Mass. And so in the Chrism Mass, we celebrate the blessing of the holy oils. So if any of you have ever been to a baptism before, a confirmation before, or you've had a loved one anointed because they've been sick, you wonder where do these oils come from? This is the mass that those oils come from. So we have the blessing of the oil of catechumens, the oil of the sick, and the oil of chrism. And so the Archbishop blesses all those three oils at this particular mass. All of the priests around Sydney at this mass will renew their priestly promises. So the promises they made on the day of their ordination will be made and pledged again. So it's renewed, like a wedding couple, a married couple might renew their vows uh, to each other uh, on their anniversary. We as priests renew our priestly promises at this Mass. So it's a really beautiful wow. time of fraternity. It's a, it's a time that's very sacred and priestly in its character. And that is then continued into the Mass of the Lord's Supper in the evening where we do have the institution of the Eucharist and uh, what we have commonly referred to as the birthday of the priesthood where Jesus sits around table and he institutes the, the Eucharist and he says, this is my body given for you when he takes the bread and this is my blood given for you when he takes the wine, the chalice. And so it's because of those words that this particular event is perpetuated through history. And we see our priests say this at every Mass. But the one thing I'd love to touch on, which is very beautiful, happens before the institution of the Eucharist. And that is that our Lord, who through 
an act of pure humil- humility, leaves his throne in heaven and becomes one of us. And not only does he become one of us, he uh, assumes the condition of a slave. And as we heard in the the letter of St. Paul yesterday um, at the Palm Sunday Mass, not only does he humble himself to be a slave, but humbles himself so much to accepting death, even death on a cross. And he leaves his appointed 12, a model of service at this particular Mass, which you will see every priest perform in your parishes. You'll see the Archbishop do it at the Holy Thursday Mass, and that is one of the most humble acts of service, the washing of feet. Now, we've seen the way that Peter reacts to this request, and then our Lord says, well, if you're not going to allow me to wash your feet, you can have nothing to do with me. And then Peter flips and says, well, not just my feet, but my head and my body as well. It's a beautiful act and a reminder that we as priests are here to serve. Okay? And sometimes service means dying to yourself, humbling yourself, and understanding that you're going to have to sacrifice to popular opinion. You're going to say, I know this is the direction the crowd wants me to go in, but no, as an act of humble service, I'm going to have to do the unpopular thing. And Jesus shows us what the unpopular thing is by washing feet. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful um, liturgy which starts the sacred Paschal Triduum, those three days of one long liturgy. So you will notice that on that particular day, we don't finish with a final blessing at that Mass. We process out. We carry our Lord into the darkness of what he's about to enter into. So there's no sign of the cross made at the end of that Mass. It's one lengthy liturgy. And you'll notice it at the Good Friday Mass, at the commemoration of the Lord's Passion, that we walk in and we don't make the sign of the cross. We get straight into it. Um, so it's it's a really beautiful thing. The same thing also happens at the Easter Vigil Mass. When we begin in darkness with the blessing of the Easter fire, the Paschal candle, Christ as our light, he breaks through the shackles of um, of darkness and sin, and he, he rises from the dead. And so this is such a beautiful thing from the Lord's Supper to the Lord's Passion and the Easter Vigil, all tied into one. And then we get the glory of the resurrection at that vigil and Easter Sunday. So I'm just encouraging everyone to really make it a sacred time. You know, I know it's going to hurt. I know we're a faith and footy podcast. (laughs) And I know that there are some exciting games of footy over the weekend, but give them up. You'll survive. You can watch a replay. You don't need to go to the Easter show. You don't need to go to the footy. Just be at home with your family. Get to Mass. Do what is right in our spiritual life. And really mark the occasion. We've spoken in previous weeks about how people don't mark the occasion. How maybe for some people, Good Friday can feel like an Easter Sunday because there's just no difference in anything. Mm. Like Good Friday... Fast. Don't eat until midday. Don't eat meat. It's actually a request from the church. Do not eat meat on Good Friday. But also don't eat lobster and fancy seafood. Like actually have very small portions of food. Suffer a little bit with our Lord who is who is nailed to the cross on that day with a love so pure and so whole that we should do something too in return. So there's so much happening this week. And so I reiterate my challenge to the viewers and listeners that this podcast be the last thing you listen to or watch before we enter into this Paschal Triduum. Yeah, this week's a beautiful week. Massive week. My goodness. It's like you, you touched on it right at the start of the episode is this is the week like no, no matter how your own Lent has gone, 
this is like intensify now. Like everything, if we failed at something, if we've done things well, now just do it better. <laughs> and so it really helps like almost put you in the mood of the week, um, which is really beautiful. Uh, the Triduum is my favorite, favorite, favorite time of the year. It's so beautiful. The Easter Vigil Mass is like the peak of Mass, in my opinion. I don't know if that's like a church teaching or anything, <laughs> but it is the absolute peak of like extravagance and joy. And oh, if, if you've never experienced an Easter Vigil Mass, please do. It is so beautiful, especially when done right. <laughs> it is amazing. Um, so, sorry, just starting with all the questions that come I in know, my head. I know. So, you said the Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Saturday are one mass, one long mass. One long event. Okay. So... Well, actually, firstly, sorry. Do you know why that is? Like why it's just the one mass and not just three separate masses? It's a good question. I'd have to follow that one up for you. Okay, that's okay. That just popped up now yeah, as well. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, even by that, even by that question, you've made me think a little bit. We um, because we're not really dismissed from those moments, we are entering into a almost it's its own kind of mood so to speak it's like you usually get to go forth the mass is ended final blessing and get out there but we leave in a very solemn and almost somber way on holy thursday evening we're not celebrating yeah yeah, yeah. we're not we're not celebrating so it's like we leave it and we're just we're with our lord now so at the, we're with him at the Last Supper, but we're also with him in the garden. And could you not watch with me just one hour? And then the, the, uh, the occasion of the mob coming to arrest him, and then our Lord being held overnight, and just us waiting and hoping, and then Good Friday with the mob walking the stations all the way to his crucifixion and the commemoration of the crucifixion of our Lord and his death for our sins. And then even that, no final blessing there and moving into a sadness that our Lord's been crucified. And if you're really following that, you'll wake up on Saturday morning and you'll be like, there's something weird about today. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling. I get it every, every Easter Saturday um, just before the vigil, it's like a weird feeling. I don't know what to feel yet. <laughs> yeah. It's like, should I feel joyful because I'm anticipating something or am I still sad? And it's as the day goes on, it starts to build almost in intensity where, where we start that particular mass still in darkness. And then we have the lighting of the Easter fire, the lighting of the candle, and then the deacon will proclaim Lumen Christi, Christ our light, as we walk through a church and then start to illuminate it. Um, <coughs> we've gone with the flow, the ebbs and the flows of that one long event. So if you well, follow it, nice, yeah. if you follow it, you should really be feeling it too. Um, but if it's just... If you only attend one, then you won't feel what the others can give. Yeah. You know what I mean? Should we go to all three if since you, it's the one long mass? If you can, yes. If you can, yes. Go to all of them. Thursday evening, okay? If you've got commitments on a, thir on a holy Thursday evening, maybe sport or whatever it might be, just give it up for that one Thursday. Um, the Lord's Good Friday is a public holiday in this country. Mm. Go to the good, go to Stations of the Cross in the morning. 
Most parishes will have it at about 10, 10.30 and then come to the Lord's Passion at 3 p.m. You know, I get it. It's the start of the school holidays. Start the school holidays right. Go to that. Don't go to the Easter show. Don't go to the footy. Like really commemorate what's happening on that day. And then the Easter vigil, the Saturday evening, okay, that's beautiful. If you've no, not been to an Easter vigil before, a lot of people will go to an Easter Sunday. That's wonderful. Of course, Sunday, go Sunday. <laughs> but the Easter vigil, it's got different readings. It's got baptisms. It's got blessing of holy water. There's so much different happening. A great experience to have. <clears throat> I can't even stress that. That Easter vigil. It's actually my favorite, favorite thing ever. Oh, it's so beautiful. Anyway, sorry. I just thought I'd put that out there one more time. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so the peak. We just, we get out to these things and we're reminded of God's love most at this time of year and go to your local parish, get a good confession in, examine your conscience, go to confession, receive our Lord in the Eucharist. This is the time. Go and do it. Nothing to lose. As I said last week, people get nervous. Just tell your priest, been a long time, Father. I need to know. Um, so that's partly, you know, one of one of the things that we can be doing in this time. But really make this week different. Make it holy and go with what the church is offering us this week. And when we do it on our own and we think, oh, I won't go Holy Thursday. I don't need to go Good Friday. I'll just go Easter Sunday. Like it's just another Sunday thing. You do really miss out on the richness of what it's offering. You do. And the way to reorient and reconfigure, to recalibrate, is by taking this Holy Week very seriously, by accepting the Against the Grain Challenge. After you watch this show or listen to this show, you cease all social media for the week and you keep it solely focused on Jesus who loves you, who went to the cross for you and for me. Amen. So no no, no footy on Friday, no Easter show on Friday, no technology for the Triduum. Open up your Bibles, read the passion narrative, think about our Lord. That's what's key in all of this. You want to press the restart button? This is the way you do it. Maybe I'm popular, but I'm sticking with it because I've seen what it's done to me. I've seen what it's done to you. I've seen what it's done to so many people when they put God first. Wow. And on that note, I think let's get into Holy Week. We're praying for you. The Against the Grain team are praying for you all. We pray you have a blessed Holy Week ahead. Remember that Jesus is the reason for all of this now. His love for you is the reason he's going to the cross. So let's honour that sacrifice by getting serious with our friends and family and giving this holy week and by extension every Sunday, every ounce of our lives, our thoughts, our actions to the one who saves us and wants us to be reconciled to the Father once again in heaven. And for those being accepted or fully accepted into the Catholic Church this weekend. Amen. Let's say a special prayer for them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these moments that we've shared with one another, for the discussions that we've had. We ask that you watch over those who are seriously injured in this past round of NRL. Keep them in good spirits. We pray for all those who are being accepted into the church this Easter through baptism or coming into full communion. We pray for them and their families. We want to say thank you, Lord, for the great example you're going to give us on Holy Thursday, that great example of service by being servants to all, even those we find hard to love. We thank you for the great gift of the Eucharist that you are going to institute this Holy Thursday. We thank you for carrying your heavy cross to Calvary that is a representation of our sins, being nailed to that cross on Good Friday and for giving your life for us. 
and we look forward with great hope to the light that will overshadow the darkness, that will overcome the darkness this Easter Saturday and for the beautiful resurrection that we will experience on Easter Sunday. We ask all these prayers and we give you all these thanks in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ says, you are the salt of the earth. What good is salt if it loses its taste? So stay salty. And don't be afraid to go against the grain. God bless. A blessed Holy Week to you all.